Bun version 1.3 has finally been released with a ton of new updates and a new database. My squeal. But instead of going through all the updates in detail, I'm just gonna go through the five most important ones that you need to build a full stack JavaScript application, mostly using Bun. I mean, this new update has got me considering ditching Node entirely, aside from one key thing that Bun is missing, which I'll talk about at the end of the video. Anyway, let's get into it. And before we do, don't forget to hit subscribe. The first awesome new feature of Bun 1.3 is the ability to run HTML files using Bun's front-end dev server. So here in this project, I have a simple HTML file and to run it, all I have to do is run Bun index HTML, which will start a server in 11 milliseconds on this port, showing off my vibe coded HTML page. There's also a few options here, like to clear the screen, open the browser and even quit the server. I could even update this test project to change index.tsx to index.html. And this will also run correctly, even though it's using JavaScript and it comes with hot module reloading. You can also easily set up a React project with Shad CN or Tailwind, which comes complete with Tailwind classes. Moving on to the next point, which is Redis support, as well as support for Postgres, MySQL and SQLite. Bun also has a super fast Redis client that works by using the Redis URL environment variable by default, or you can create a custom Redis client, which supports incrementation using hash operations, and you can also send raw commands. Next is the Bun update interactive flag, which lets you choose the exact dependency that you want to update. Pressing A selects all, N selects none, and with a dependency selected, you can press L to toggle between latest and target. You can also use bun outdated to see which dependencies are out of date, bun Y to explain why a package was installed. And if your project uses workspaces, you can use the recursive flag to see which workspace a dependency belongs to. You can also use the bun info command to get information about a specific dependency. Next up is Bun's built-in cookies support, which can be used in Bun Serve using request cookies to set or to delete a cookie, or you could use the Bun cookie class to read and to write cookies, or even use the cookie map class for working with a collection of cookies. And last but not least is Bun Secrets that allows you to use the native security manager of your operating system to encrypt secrets for local development, which is more secure than using environment variables and could prevent you from accidentally pushing sensitive code. There's also Bun CSRF and also Z standard compression. Honestly, I think Bun 1.3 is at a point where you can build a decent full stack application without needing a bundler like Vite or a framework like Express, unless you need to use a specific plugin or piece of middleware. But right now it doesn't have native open telemetry support, which there's lots of documentation for in a node project and Dino supports out of the box. Yes, I'm sure there are many workarounds, but it would be nice if there was an easy way to get telemetry signals out of a Bun project. Anyway, what do you think of Bun 1.3? Is it the upgrade you were expecting or are there some missing features? Let me know in the comments. Again, don't forget to subscribe and until next time, happy coding.